investigator on the category of television. Last week, he answered a question worth $8,000 cash. Today, he will tell us if he will quit or risk his winnings on a prize worth $16,000. All this and more on the show that rewards knowledge and not chance, the $128,000 question. Now, here's your host, the star of our show. Thank you very much. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome once again to the $128,000 question. We're going to start off this evening by dealing with a rather unusual situation, and in order to do that, we're going to bring out our first contestant. Sandy, if you will. Alex joining us again is our manager from Akron, Ohio, John Crutz. John, move in a little closer, if you would. John was with us on our last program, ladies and gentlemen, and at that time we gave him a question worth $4,000. It was in four parts, and John, you answered one part of it incorrectly, or at least that's what we thought at the time. And for those of you who weren't watching last week, the question had to do with World War I. That's John's category. And one part of the question was about a French ace who wore a lady's stocking on his head. And your answer was Gonamer? Gonamer, yes. Gonamer. And we said the correct answer was Navarre. But we did some research, and we found out something interesting about uh, French flyers in World War I. And I don't know what this says about the French, but a lot of those guys wore ladies' nylon stockings, or silk stockings, I guess, in those days, on their head uh, when they went out uh, into battle, right? right? Okay, our research department has done a lot of work, and we consider your answer as good as ours. And so you have, in effect, correctly answered the $4,000 question. And that's why he's here tonight. That's Mr. Nice going. And as you know, there's no risk involved. You're automatically going on to the $8,000 level. And no matter what happens to you from this point on, you will leave the $128,000 question with a brand new automobile worth uh, $128,000. It's a fancy car, isn't it? No, you're going to leave with a car worth $4,000. But good luck on the $8,000 question. Sylvie, you escort John into the booth. All right, John, we are all in position, so let's go to work. May I have the $8,000 question, please, Mr. O'Rourke? Thank you. The category, once again, is World War I. The $8,000 question is in five parts. You must answer each part correctly. However, should you miss one of the parts, not to worry, there is a makeup question. During the First World War, it was rarely all quiet on the Western Front, which stretched from the English Channel to the Swiss border. For $8,000, answer these questions about the war on the Western Front. Part one, a long-range German gun used against Liège, Belgium, in 1914, had a very famous female nickname. What nickname was given to the gun? Second part, poison gas was first used in World War I on April 22, 1915. Name the battle in which it was used. Third part, in order to honor the heroic Marine 4th Brigade, what French woods was renamed Wood of the Brigade of the Marines? Fourth part, General Eric Ludendorff called August 8, 1918, the blackest day of the German army. To what battle was Ludendorff referring? And finally, for $8,000, vowing they shall not pass, he commanded the French Second Army in its defense of Verdun. Who is he? Those are the five parts you have to consider. Think about them for 20 seconds. go, John? Yes, sir. Okay, first part. Answer these questions about the war on the Western Front. A long-range German gun used against Liège, Belgium in 1914 had a very famous female nickname. What nickname was given to the gun? Big Bertha. That's correct. Poison gas was first used in World War I on April 22nd, 1915. Name the battle in which it was used. Second Battle of Ypres. Ypres, yes. Three, in order to honor the heroic Marine 4th Brigade, 
What French woods was renamed Wood of the Brigade of the Marines? Bellow Wood. Bellow is correct again. Fourth part of the question. General Eric Ludendorff called August 8th, 1918, the blackest day of the German army. To what battle was Ludendorff referring? It was a battle where the English and the uh, French broke through the tanks, the Battle of Amiens. Amiens is absolutely right. And finally, the fifth part of the question. You get this right? It's $8,000 in cash for you. Vowing they shall not pass, he commanded the French Second Army in its defense of Verdun. General Who is George, he? I'm sorry. Go George ahead. George Nivelle. Who? George Nivelle. George Nivelle is right. Now, it's, uh, I've read Pétain was there, but Pétain did not issue it. I've read this. Ah, we have, again, a little controversy. Il ne pas Oui, il, il ne passeront pas, according to our research, was spoken by Henri Pétain. But let's put that aside right now. Let's assume, since that's the answer I'm looking for and you didn't give me that one, let's assume you got it incorrectly and go on to the makeup question. All right? The battle line, which stretched from Arras to Laon, France, was named after the chief of the German general staff. Who was he? General Hindenburg. That is absolutely right. You've got $8,000 in cash. Come out of there. Causing us some great problems, but fun problems. I'm not aiming to. No, that, that's all right, because it sends me back to the research books also, just to find out, for curiosity's sake, because I have nothing to do with the preparing the questions, but I'm sure you've got all our researchers going now, but no problem, you answered the makeup question correctly, so you have $8,000 in cash, and now you've got a decision to make. You've got to go home and think about what you're going to do with that $8,000. You're going to keep it and leave us on the $128,000 question, or are you going to return and risk it on a question worth 16000 Good luck in making your decision. Our expert on World War I, ladies and gentlemen. We'll check on it. You can be sure of that. And we will return right after this commercial break. Receive the 1978 Buick Skylark as fun to drive as it is comfortable. The Buick, which fits almost everybody's lifestyle. A little science, a little magic. Buick's unmistakable Skylark. And for confident car care, use Kendall Superb All Seasons Motor Oil. Especially engineered for today's driving needs so that you can drive with Kendall confidence. And Turtle Extra. Extra easy, extra durable, extra brilliant. New Turtle Extra, the extra hard shell car wax. The top of the line from Turtle Wax. Once again, here's Alex. John Kratz, our expert on World War I, goes home to think about the 8,000 he's just won, and we welcome back somebody who's had a week to think about the 8,000 he won last time. Joining us for the fourth time in the category of television is our probation investigator from Philadelphia, Don Ben, who will tell us if he will try for a question worth $16,000. Don, before we get your answer to that very important question, you and I chatted on your previous appearances about your work as a probation officer. You're constantly dealing with criminals, murderers, uh, uh, robbers, and all of that. It must be, in many ways, a depressing job. Now, what do you do to kind of, uh, you know, keep a, a lighter outlook on life? Well, it is a depressing job, Alex, but luckily I have a second profession. My partner and I work as professional comedians. Are you successful at it? We get a lot of laughs. Yeah? Well, you've got a lot to smile about on the $128,000 question. You've got $8,000 in cash to this point. Do you want to keep it and quit, or do you want to risk it and try for $16,000? Well, I talked it over with my girlfriend, and in spite of what she says, <laughs> I'm going to go on. All right. He's going on for $16,000. Sylvie, take it into the booth. Good luck, Don. in spite of what she said. Okay, Don, she'll get you for that. Don's category, ladies and gentlemen, is television. And here, from Mr. O'Rourke, the question worth $16,000. Characters like Laverne and Shirley, Don, and the Fawns in current situation comedies appeal to a nostalgic reminiscent of the reminiscences of the 1950s. Yet the 50s themselves provided us with many situation comedies fondly remembered by trivia buffs such as yourself. For $16,000, we'll name the supporting characters 
in some 1950s situation comedies. You give me the title of each series. First, Freddie Wilson, George Honeywell, Mrs. Odets, and Vern Albright. Second part of the question, Philip Boynton, Walter Denton, Harriet Conklin, and Minerva the Cat. Third part, K.G. Calhoun, Vi Praskins, and Peter Sands. Four, Jane Stacy, Richard Rhinelander III, Professor Kropotkin, and Mrs. O'Reilly. And finally, the fifth part of the question for a prize worth $16,000, Rocco Barbella, Rupert Ritzik, Dino Paparelli, and Francis Grover. Those are the five parts to the question. You've got 20 seconds. Don, good luck to you. Remember, if you uh, happen to miss one of the questions, we've got a makeup for you. And if you're not sure about any one part, uh, you can skip it and come back to it later. I'll name the supporting characters in some 1950 situation comedies. You give me the title of the series. The first part was Freddie Wilson, George Honeywell, Mrs. Odets, and Vern Albright. It's my little Margie. You are correct. Philip Boynton, Walter Denton, Harriet Conklin, and Minerva the Cat. Let's come back to that one. All right. K.G. Calhoun, Vi Praskins, and Peter Sands. That was the Ann Southern show. It was called Katie the Private Secretary. Private Secretary. We'll accept that. Private Secretary. Fine. Jane Stacy, Richard Rhinelander III, Professor Kropotkin, and Mrs. O'Reilly. That would be my friend Irma. You're right. Again. And now... The fifth part, Rocco Barbella, Rupert Ritzik, Dino Paparelli, and Francis Grover. Original name was You'll Never Get Rich, changed to The Phil Silver Show. And very popular in both titles. All right, now we go back to the one you skipped. Philip Boynton, Walter Denton, Harriet Conklin, and Minerva the Cat. Minerva the Cat. For $16,000. Can I hear one more time? Philip Boynton, Walter Denton, Harriet Conklin, Minerva the Cat. Or Miss Brooks. You're right, for $16,000. this show and not appearing on it as an expert, particularly on television, is that I can't answer any of these questions. But you know, the only one that I knew the answer to was Philip Boynton, Walter Denton, Harriet Conklin, and Minerva the Cat. Now, you've got a weird sense of humor, and I'm just wondering, were you really stumped there for a little while, or were you just sort of making it dramatic for us? I didn't remember a cat from the series, and I was trying to think if there was a cat in it or not, and finally I said, well, there's a Boynton, it's got to be our Miss Brooks. And there's a Walter Denton and a Harriet Conklin. Okay, Don, congratulations, $16,000. Go home, and we'll see you next time around when you fly for 32. Embodied in Buick's tradition of luxury, elegance, and prestige. A little science, a little magic, the distinctive Buick electric. And lush, lush, and thirsty St. Mary's towels can add an eyeful of color excitement to any bath. Plus, Polymex Dial Massage. The only pulsating shower head with four shower heads in one. Plus, the exclusive new water-conserving power control. Back to you, Alex Trebek. And move right along and introduce a new contestant to our program. Joining us for the first time is our car dealership manager from Toronto, here's Tom Kent. Tom, you're in car dealership? Yes, right? I am. Yes, I am. 
Ah, the reason I uh, sort of looked at you there, I wanted you to repeat it because uh, you have a slight accent. What uh, uh, ethnic background? I am from Hungary. Ah, all right. Now, I know your category has uh, nothing at all to do with automobiles, but it's involved some way in the transportation business. Tell the folks what your category is. Horse racing. Horse racing. All right. A car dealership uh, gentleman, manager, who was involved in horse racing. We had a young guy by the name of Darren Cudmore a few weeks back on the program, who I thought was uh, fairly bright on the subject of horse racing. Were you able to, uh, in watching the show, answer all the questions he did? It sounds bragging, but I did. You did, even the one yeah. he missed. Yeah. All right, well, let's go to the post and see how you do on your own. Good luck. Tom, we're going to start you off with a question worth $64. May I have the question pack, please? As long as you keep giving me correct answers and are willing to continue, we'll keep doubling your money. If at any time you give me an incorrect answer, you go home with a dollar. Here's your first question. Which race is part of the Triple Crown? Is it the Traverse Stakes or the Preakness Stakes? The Preakness. You're absolutely right. You've got $64. You're off the money. You want to try to double it? Okay, we're doubling it. For $128, the terms bay and roan refer to the sex of a horse or the color of a horse? The color of the horse. You've got $128. Do we continue? Yes. We keep reinvesting the money, just like at the track, right, Tom? For $256, the colored pole located exactly one furlong from the finish wire is called the eighth pole or the half mile pole. Can you repeat that, please? The colored pole located exactly one furlong from the finish wire is called the eighth pole or the half mile pole. The eighth pole. You're right. Two hundred and fifty-six. You're going on. For five hundred and twelve, a horse is said to carry the target if he runs first all the way, or if he runs last all the way. Carry the target. Does I'm he run? guessing runs first all the way. Oh no. He's carrying the target, Tom. He runs last all the way. I'm guessing. Well, that's all right. That's a term that I was not familiar with also. As I mentioned a few moments ago, it's like being at the racetrack and you take your winnings from the first race, you invest it in the second and in the third. And, and at the racetrack, it. pardon? And losing it. And losing it sometimes. You go away with a dollar, but thank you very much, Tom, for joining okay. us on the program. I'm sorry it didn't work out better. Tom Ken. We're going to take a break, folks, for a commercial message, and then we'll bring on another contestant. See you then. As an expert on any subject at all, not just the ones you see on our program, drop us a line. Tell us first your regular occupation, your category as an expert, and send your name and address along with a photograph to contestants. Post Office Box 1280, Radio City Station, New York, New York, 10019. That's contestants. Post Office Box 1280, Radio City Station, New York, New York, 1009. Include your phone number and photographs cannot be returned. Some of our contestants receive Blue Luster Shampoo and Shampoo. Clean all the carpets in an average home for under $10 with Blue Luster Shampoo and a Blue Luster Shampoo available for rent. And handy table dispensers of Subi Honey, great for sweetening and topping. Discover the natural goodness of Subi. And Jolly Time, the popcorn with the extraordinary taste the whole family loves. Pops tender, crispy, and delicious Jolly Time popcorn. Now back to you, Alex Trebek. Once again, we welcome you coming. $28,000 question. Let's bring them out. Alex also joining us for the first time is our music teacher from Cambridge, Harry Curry. Harry, what kind of music do you teach? Instrumental music and music appreciation mainly. Okay, before you tell us what your category is, I understand that you are, uh, give a pretty good imitation of uh, well-known public figures. Is that correct? Oh, I, I'd hardly call it an imitation, but um, with the phrasing that he does, you can't help but follow it when you sing, if you listen to his records. Okay, go ahead. I will let you be featured center stage here. You vowed your love from here to eternity. You carry that very, very nicely. Let's hear it for Harry Curry. And 
the phrasing was absolutely bang on. Dean Martin. I mean, we'd recognize him almost anywhere. I thought it was Joey Bishop. Yeah, well, one of, one of the group. One of the group. Is that uh, your category also? Which? The uh, man who uh, you just uh, sort of gave a little impersonation of? Frank Sinatra. Frank Sinatra. Absolutely right. One of the great singers of all time. I assume you share that particular point of view, right? Oh, very much so. How did you get interested in Frank Sinatra? Well, it was uh, 1952, and I was driving in my car, and I heard a new record by Frank Sinatra called The Birth of the Blues. And that was the first one that I thought he really sang with a full voice, you know. And um, from that point on, I began listening to his records and collecting them. All right, when do you think he was at his best? In the 50s, when he was uh, the idol of all the Bobby Soxers, or in the last, say, in the late 60s? Boy, you're putting me on the spot Excuse there. Me. We're and Sylvie time. has arrived to take you off the spot. All right, Harry Curry, we're going to wait until our next program to uh, start the questioning on the subject of Frank Sinatra. You'll be back, I'm sure, right? I'll be here. And Sylvie will also, ladies and gentlemen, and we'd like to have you join us because it's uh, a lot more fun when we know you folks are looking in. Till then, this is Alex Rebeck for all of us here. So long from the $128,000 question. See you next time. Our contestants receive Switzers, the candy makers that have kept candy lovers happy for over 90 years. All kinds of Switzers for all kinds of people. And Pan, the pure vegetable cooking spray that stops food from sticking without adding fat, calories, or cholesterol. And America's number one cleaner disinfectant, Pine Sol. It does more than clean. Pine Sol cleans, disinfects, and deodorizes. And win your family's applause, Sir Nestle Soup Time. Ten-second soups with home-style stock. Look for these faces on your grocery shelf. And soothing medicated relief for coughs and dry irritated throat. For cough drops, you can't top a drop of it. When Don Ben, our probation investigator on television, will try for a question worth $32,000 on the $128,000 question. I'm Sandy Hoyt. This program was recorded. Tomorrow at 4 on the Mike Douglas Show, join Mike and his very special co-host, songwriter Marvin Hamlish. They'll be joined by actor Michael Caine, the Mike Douglas Show, tomorrow at 4 on 3 for All.